I'm Leah. Nice to talk to you. Hi, Leah. Hi, Leah. Um, so what surprised you most about this, either this Nikki story or just this corner of history in general? About Nikki's story, I think, was the ordinariness of the man and the way he begins and his humility. The fact that it's so opposite to the intergeneration that this is a man who did all this good stuff because it was the right thing to do, not because he was trying to set up a post or, or say, look how, look how noble I've been. It was just about the understated good of what he was trying to achieve. Was there ever um, in the in the writing or directing process uh, the thought to do a more linear version or was going back and forth between older and younger Nikki sort of always the plan? The script was far more linear. Um, we started with a little bit of old Nikki, did the whole 1930s part of the story with young Nikki and then right back to the 80s. Um, we discovered in the shooting and in editorial, partly because Tony and Johnny are so good at playing their respective roles and the similarity of their performances helps us to segue in between the two time zones, but also that the story benefited from intercutting, the way the past story, the 30s, relates and supports the 80s, the way questions in the 80s are answered by things you excavate from the 1930s. So it brings a little bit of mystery. It helps support the characters. It seemed to advance the film much more powerfully by jumping between the two time zones. Um, yeah, then my next question, people often ask actors if they're playing a younger version of a character, like, did you watch? How did you try to mirror or match the other performer? As a director, how did you track that and work with the two of them to create one character? We brought Johnny in, obviously, to meet with Tony. Tony was shooting first. That was really for production reasons. Um, they spent a considerable amount of time together. Johnny then inhabited the set for those few days. Um, I might lose power. I will do something about that very quickly. Um, and uh, he, he studied all the little details that Tony was bringing into his performance. So some of them were physical, some of them were vocal. Uh, and they talked about how they both studied and read the nature of the man, where he pitched his emotions. So it was a story of the two teaching each other about what they wanted to bring. They also had an, a biography of the man that tells a story from the guy right from his early childhood up to the, the stage we joined him in the 1930s. So you kind of have chapters of backstory that they were both able to build on together. Um, how familiar were you with this story before? I know it's a, at least the That's Life was a popular like moment in television. Uh, yes, I mean, honestly, not familiar beyond that. I knew the same clip. You know, That's Life was a massive show in the UK in the 1980s. I mean, more than a third of the population tuned in to watch it every Sunday. So you think of that now in the US, so that's whatever it is, 120 million people tuning in to watch one show. Um, and that happened week after week. So uh, it, it had a big impact at the time. And of course, that clip has gone viral. But that's what I knew. I understood the rest of the story. I knew about the kind of transport more broadly. I didn't know the details of the man and this extraordinary life. Um, and then one last question, you've worked with Helena before, what was it like reuniting for your first feature? It was like reuniting. I've been speaking her just this very morning as you are speaking to her probably elsewhere now. Um, it was wonderful. She's, she's a friend. Uh, she's such an energy in the ensemble and on set. I can hear her laughter right this moment echoing behind me. And uh, it's a joy. We'll be looking for the next thing together. Well, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. And you.